ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's WCTV Game of the Week number two. Paul Brees, Michael Williams here at Franklin High School as the Rebels of Franklin on senior night host the Independence Eagles in what could be a battle of second and third place in the district. Centennial would have something to say about that, Coach Williams. Absolutely. Centennial got something to say about it. Franklin High's got something to say about it, as does Independence. Of course, everybody's chasing Ravenwood in the county. The Raptors uh, heading to the house with a great with a great record. But one of these two teams can make uh, some headway tonight with a victory. Congratulations to all the seniors who were just announced a little while ago. Probably about 150 combined with dancers and cheerleaders and football players and ROTC members and uh, band people. Great atmosphere tonight at Franklin High School. My alma mater. Well, I'm sure you're very proud. Here's what I do want to tell you guys <laughs> here, at, here on the uh, WCTV. This is game number two of our game of the week. Uh, we uh, Game number one broadcasted Page at Fairview by our good friends at Fairview High School Media Department. So you're going to double dose of Williamson County football this week, free of charge, <laughs> and we're Way glad you're here. So Corey Fatoni going to kick this thing off. You know what, Michael Williams, the returner for <laughs> Independence, uh, can't Dom catch Childress. his number, but you know what? He probably knows it's going to the end zone. Uh, <laughs> standing at the 10. Uh, and and it's good, almost, almost. Well, Independence going to get the ball first, Coach. Yeah, you've got to talk about scoring and scoring at will. Andrew Bunch, the quarterback, Childress, Swayze, Wright, Hunter, Johnson, and the guys up front, Weathers, Thompson, Dalton, Michael Weathers, and Noah Leak. Love watching Andrew Bunch play quarterback for this Independence Eagles team. Young man's got a nice arm. He thinks well. He can put, put it on a dime. Young man can spin it all over the yard. Well, he has racked up almost 2,400 yards total offense himself, as well as nine touchdowns, and, or 28 touchdowns combined, 19 in the air and nine on the ground. So the Franklin defense, David Bain getting the start, Philby, Boat, Hazleton, Beam, Paul, Slesman, Katerik, Craddock, Kyle Evans, and Matt Gonzalez. David Bain, the, the fresh face out there, starting in place of Booth Page with a injury. And that, you know, Booth Page, Michael, is a, a, tr a kind of one of the catalyst leaders on that team. Kind of a tackling machine. Tackling machine. Booth was uh, introduced a little while ago as with his mother and father out here at the 50-yard line. They were very proud of him. Dom Childress racking up a couple of big early yards here. Uh, Childress, 755 yards rushing, 196 receiving, nine touchdowns. The guy is a threat every time he touches the ball. So here we go, second and short. Great situation for the Independence offense, and they go, and they go fast. Sure Bunch enough, nice. it, and who is that? That is going to be number two, Coach Nate Johnson, the five foot ten, one hundred and sixty-two pound wide receiver and DB, eleventh grader. Nate Johnson, forty-two catches, eight hundred ninety-four yards, thirteen touchdowns in the season and that could have been number 14. Could have been. These uh, these Rebels giving up way too many yards way too early. That's got to be concerning for Franklin's coaching staff. First and 10, Bunch. Downhill, going to keep it this time, Bunch. Bounces the outside, going to pick up the first, plus a little extra, taking Goodness. it to the 10, Coach. All the way down to the 10-yard line. Great little keeper right there as he scooted around on that right side, weaved his, weaved his way in and out of traffic down at the 10-yard line, yet another first down for these Independence Eagles. So again, we talked about Bunch, 370 yards, and nine touchdowns on the ground. Players. He is Mr. Everything. Out in space is Adam Swayze down here at the bottom of your, square, at bottom of your screen. And they go, whoops. Fumble, I believe that one is picked up by the, is that picked up by the Rebels? Well, it's or was be he close. recovered out of bounds? Yeah. So it's going to be second down. You know, Independence was going really, really well this series. Yeah. And <laughs> Whoops. That, had to go backwards a little bit. Yeah, that cannot happen. You're five and three on the season. You're fighting for your playoff life. You feel like you got a pretty good solid foot in the ground, at least for the playoffs, but you do not want to start on the road and you don't want to go to Murfreesboro <laughs> game number one. Absolutely not. Uh, that's the uh, probably the Emerald City you do not want to see. Just the pitch and catch number two, Coach. That's going to be 
Nate Johnson again. Man. The 11th grader having two big catches early in this drive. Independence threatening early with 10-24 to go here in the first quarter. Well, I will say this. Coach, here is a lineup in a power formation bunch. We're going to have a big Under scrum right here. I think so. We got a little Childers over the top and, and put it in the it books. Him. We'll have a flag here, too. Looks like I wonder if we're going to have some uh, unsportsmanlike at the bottom of the pile. Well, that's 72. Josh Philby right there at your screen, and he was – he, uh, I think he took a little swing at the guy's helmet, and now he may be ejected on senior night. Unfortunate. He and shucked his helmet, and he's off the field. Yeah, he is done. And Coach Webb greeting him. And, and not only does he get the ejection, I believe, this half, or this uh, game, excuse me, there may be another one. I think you may have to sit down too. So you might Scott, have to sit off the next next game. What do you got right there, Coach Blade? Got to be happy. Scott Blade had a nice nice march downfield from their own 20-yard line, 80 yards and what, about seven plays? It, was that it? Of course, we don't have our computer graphics up in front no. of us tonight, but that's okay. We can kind of guess as we go along. Absolutely. But a nice mix of the pass and run all the way down and finally punched it over the end zone where – Punched it over the end zone line with 10, 10 minutes to go here in this uh, first quarter. Well, don't adjust your screens. Number 53, that's Chris Cole, 5'8", 214, offensive and defensive lineman. Wow, that, my friends. Kicked it into the Nerf game over there in the far end zone. <laughs> looks, that looks as about as good as he can get from a big fellow like that. Nicely done. You know, you see those big guys sometimes, Coach, you think maybe they're going to kick it with their toe. The old toe kick. <laughs> the old toe kick. Well, you see those, right that, went out the win that went out the window in the late 1970s, oh, I believe. There, yep. You see Cole with the extra point. Now let's go back to, you know, the ejection by Philby. Uh, Philby, 56 tackles on the season, 10 tackles for loss and five sacks. And we talked about the other guy that's on oh, the Oh, that's uh, a huge loss Booth right page. out of the gate for, Phil for Franklin. Uh, yeah, and Philby, the defensive stalwart. And now Booth Page again injured. He has eight and a half tackles for losses and five sacks. So a lot of pressure up front by those two guys, and now they don't have them. So no pressure equals a lot of time in the well, passing you, game. And you look at that, the way they marched downfield in the first with that first series and with no Philby, now what do you do? Now you're playing catch up. Now you've got damage control for the rest of the night. This might turn into a track meet. Who knows? Yeah. And, and maybe got, that's what Franklin wants at this stage. Well, I know Independence wants it. I mean, they are, I believe they're averaging almost 39 points a game, 520 yards of offense. Holy and that's cow. a lot of yards. That's a lot of real estate for a high school team. Well, they just went 80 <laughs> in a matter of uh, less than two minutes. Here's your big man, Chris Cole, about to kick off again. Let's see if he can punch it deep into the end zone for the Eagles. Here he goes. Cole, not going to quite make it to the end. Well, let's see. He's going to – oh, they give him the – Oh, both feet in the end zone. Yeah. Well, here's our first look at the Franklin offense. Rich Lowe, three-year starter for Franklin. Milam, great job at running back, stepping in. Young, Hill, Pinnell, Matthews, the big uh, op offensive uh, receiver. Woodward, Williamson, Mullman, Zerfis getting the start. And Dahlman. Well, they introduced Matthews a little while ago, uh, the six foot five senior, Garrison Matthews, 210 pounds. Well, happy birthday to him. Today he celebrates 18 years on this earth. And I'm sure the Rebels are hoping he has, has a big game. Critchlow going for going it deep. All. He's got a man wide, Carson Young. Carson Young, intended, nicely done, just a little out of his reach. And I tell you what, he had the man beat. Second and ten. So I don't know that I wouldn't come back to that. Well, Heckman, Keegan Hudson, Pope, Sly, Swayze, Martin Dupree, Gidry, Beavers, Watson, and Stribling, Kylan Stribling, his older brother is up in Missouri right now playing a little uh, football. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So here we go, second and 10. 
Milam on the sweep here. And that is nicely done by number 25 for the Eagles, Adam Martin. And there's Boyce right there, Coach. Oh, he's going to take the shot right there. Way to hang in there, Boyce. No doubt. Get that man a crash helmet. There's your replay. Yeah, the sweep sniffed out nicely by Independence. Taking him out. Good job there, Boyce. So Get lost. that camera out yeah, of the way. Yeah, really. That's a new camera, Boyce. Maybe Let me take you. care of it. Uh, we're going to give you another five cents per hour. To <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Nope. Had a false start there. Yeah. Franklin not off to a good start tonight. Of course, if they'd hit that long one right there, offensively, that long bomb, things might have been a little bit different, but now we're going backwards. Well, I'll tell you this, uh, Coach. I think they were really physically and emotionally drained from that Ravenwood game last week, which they fell short 36-29. And now you got to bounce back. This is like the SEC West. You it is. You just got to be ready to go every time. These guys, just like what uh, Eli Gold yesterday said on the uh, – talk radio show I was listening to. These guys cannibalize each other here in Williamson County. <laughs> so third and a country mile. The pressure, Critchlow scrambles. He's got Young. He's going Oops. deep. That could be picked. And it is. Trying to do too much. Kylan Stribling. Now we just talked about him. He's stepping up and saying, wait a minute now. My brother was good, but check this out. <laughs> Right here on the replay, Coach. There he is. Uh, great job to escape and just a little tried too much to do. Tried to do yeah. too much right there. I Probably. Think you, I think you're right. I think. Uh, might have had a little bit of green in front of him. Might have could have picked up a little bit of extra yardage so they could have punted it out of there instead. Uh -huh. They come up with a turnover. Had had an opportunity to throw the uh, shorter pattern to Carson Young, I believe, on the under route. And Coach Webb right there. Really got to be frustrated with the start. And Independence, can they answer? They got the yep. swing pass out to 27. 27 is Daniel Wright, the 11th grader. Uh, is 5'10", 171 pounds. Also plays linebacker. Good little pick up there on first down. This Rebel defense being gashed early. Well, you got no pressure up front. New guys coming. Wait a minute, I spoke too soon, congratulations. Let's see the new number out there. At 16, 18, check that. Parker Pinnell. Parker Pinnell, another 12th grader. So Pinnell having to Needed that little, badly yeah, at Franklin High School. Playing a little D, getting the tackle for loss. Childers gonna run it, and he is Picked up the first down to the 30. Love watching Dom Childers run. Nice and shifty. Once he gets downhill in north and south, he is very hard to catch. He's got some great speed. We've seen him a few times this year get out in space. Well, you talk about the, the uh, well, we'll talk about it here in a second after this first down play here by Bunch. Step back, design quarterback keeper. Nice tackle. That's uh, 34. Slesman, Zach yeah, Slesman. Slesman, he Yet another senior for these Rebels. You know, on senior night, Coach Williams, you, you do a different, you know, root, pre game routine. You know, the seniors come out. You're not in your normal routine. And everybody's standing little... in line waiting to get called. Yeah. But you got to have it, you got to do it. Childers, nice tackle off the edge. That's, I uh, believe, Parker Pinnell again, so filling the shoes nicely of uh, Booth Page. Nice to be able to swap out a senior for a senior. Third and two. An important, oh, that's 58. Check it, coach, on your roster for the Rebels. 58, Elliot Hazleton. Hope I'm not butchering the last name too badly. See the one that jumps. Oh, hey, yeah, Elliot Hazleton. That's okay. Hazleton, my fault. Gives the Eagles a first down. Well, Coach Blade has this offensive line. He'll come up, they'll set, then they'll put the hand in the ground, and a number of times that will cause the defensive line to jump. And they, why they can't catch on the first few times they do it. 
Oh, the nice. middle of the field, wide open, Coach. Uh-oh. Nope, I thought they were going to make it the horse collar. Who's nice. that, 19, Seth Hunter. 5'11", 11th grader. Number of 11th graders on this independent squad, as opposed to Franklin, which is very senior loaded. Independence threatening to go up by two touchdowns early. Evans on the tackle. Oh, and nice play again by Pinnell, the shoestring tackle. You know what, Coach? I'm going to say touchdown saving tackle. Might have been. Childress had a little, had a steam right there. Again, Childress is super, super shifty. And once he gets downhill, very hard to catch. Uh, check the replay out here, Coach. Good kick out block. Nice tackle. Way to hang on there to the ankle and bring him down. Bunch going to throw. Oh, it, that Wide was Katera getting caught on the pump fake. Nate Johnson, the 11th grader, 5'10", 162 pounds. Pitch and catch over there in the end zone, corner of the end zone. Too easy. Well, there's an offensive lineman for the Eagles down number 60. That's uh, Pete Dortston. A little slow getting up. So a five-yard touchdown pass, bunch to. Who was that? Nate Johnson? Nate Johnson. Nate yes. Johnson over in the corner of the end zone. Nice pump fake. Nate Johnson goes down to the corner of the end zone, camps out for it and it's delivered like a loaf of bread. I think Katera burned on that play. Let me give you a little heads up, Coach. Rossi and Katera blocked three kicks last week. Holy cow, nicely two, done. Two PATs and a field goal. Well, nobody blocked this one as Independence goes up 14-0 here with 6.40 to go in the first quarter. So we want to encourage you to stop by the Franklin High School Quarterback Club table and pick up your copy. On the replay, we see Independence. This year's senior. Bunch with a pump fake and quickly and a and maybe a little ankle breaker right there. <laughs> and again, a little pitch and catch, Nate Johnson in the corner of the end zone for six points. Katera, not gonna like what he sees on tape on that one. Now this is an independence team, Coach Williams that gave number one in the state, Blackman, a run for its money. Had a huge lead. A massive lead. And came back as Blackman came back. Testing of fortitude. <laughs> That's right. Blackman now one of the, they're the number one team in the state uh, right now. Yeah. yeah. So 14 nothing. your score here. 640, Independence up on senior night. Katera now with an opportunity maybe to bring this one out. Nope, it goes to his partner. Grimes. Grimes going to be taken down short of the 20, and that's the main goal of special teams. See if you can get him inside the 20. Mission accomplished. Well, what do you tell the, your, your Rebels now? You're down 14-0. You started off with uh, a lot of hype tonight around senior, light, a lot, senior night, a lot of moms and dads, a lot of roses, a lot of hugs given out. Now it's time to play football. I think uh, Franklin got caught on their uh, – on their hindquarters here early in the go early in the game. Well, you got a good leader in Critchlow back there, Milan and all the receivers. Oh. And Milam gets dropped. Didn't see who that was, Coach. Uh, maybe 44 and 25. Jordan Pope makes it happen. Yeah. Jordan Pope. Jordan Pope, a junior. He's a he's an 11th grader, a junior. I, you know, you you spoke of it earlier. Independence loaded with underclassmen per se. Per se. <laughs> per se. As Andrew Bunch, the quarterback, is also a junior. Franklin needs to get something generated right here to get a little confidence back. I wonder if Matthews might not be the man to go to him. Something like keep this. Keep it on the ground. Keep it on the ground. Nice pickup of about, what, eight yards, seven yards. Landon Gidry made the tackle. Gain of about nine on the play. So a gain of nine, it's going to bring up third and short. Third and two. 
Critch Logan, shotgun formation. Grimes in the backfield with him. Rossi in motion. The sweep to the left. Picks up the first down and maybe a little bit more. Grimes, got he's speed. got the speed. What's he going to do here? Ah, keep going. Use your speed. Trust your speed, young man. That's Ben Beavers on the run out. That's what the Rebels needed right there, right then and there. Just what the doctor ordered. Jet sweep on the left side. I don't know if it's a jet sweep or not, but we'll call it a sweep. There goes Grimes now. Right here, trust your speed and go. Don't try to tap dance your way around that. Trust your speed and get down the sidelines. Pick up what you can. Yards on the play and a first Tennessee first but they'll take it, Franklin will. Never mind my criticism. Oh, a big run by Grimes on a crucial third down. Brings the Rebels back to life. Well said, because they were lifeless to begin with. Oh, and there's Pope on a great tackle. Jordan Pope coming through, five foot eight, 219 pound fire plug this kid is. He also a junior yep. for the Independence Eagles. The gain of one on the play, second and nine. Started off the year looking to carry the ball, did Jordan Pope, but I don't know that they feel, I think they might feel he's a better defensive player. Mm -hmm. and he you, certainly proved it on that play. Independence has given up a few points of their own defensively, so whoops. And there. Flags on the play. I believe that's going to be false start on Frank. On the ribs. Yeah. And sure enough, back him up five yards. This is a false start against Franklin. Caden Williams trotting on. 63. Well, I'd hate to feed Caden. Caden's six foot four, 225 pounds. Just a 10th grader, just a sophomore. I'm sure they're looking for great things out of him in the years to come. So second and 14, Good slow. Oh, and he's sacked by Pope. Hmm. And I tell you he what, you spoke of it, coach. We did speak of it a little earlier. Jordan Pope hmm. says, Young man you know what? In the backfield. Offense is okay, but I like tackling I like people. hitting people. Check it right here. He just comes free, it Sneaks looks like. Sneaks through right there on the nose tackle. <laughs> Looked like he might have been held a little bit. 73. Uh, Eric, Eric Surface. Surface, yeah. Had some issues right there. You know, offensive linemen get, uh, get beat on every play, but you just got to develop a, a cheating way of holding them or <laughs> you don't get caught if that happens. Haven't gone to Matthews yet this game. Looking to see that. Now there's Grimes there in open Grimes. space. There you go. Gets back a little bit. Nice play by uh, number seven, Landon Gidry, sophomore. Comes up from his defensive position at free safety to make the tackle. It's going to bring up about fourth and about 13. Go ahead and get rid of it, coach. And but Tony, he is also committed to an SEC uh, school, also Missouri. Now, last week, Franklin against Ravenwood pulled off the fake punt. Don't know that they do it right here with so many yards to go for a first down. We'll see if Tony hits the old coffin corner. Ooh, and he nice. does. <laughs> and he has put Independence in a bad starting field position right about the two, maybe, Coach. Well, with the way Independence has been able to drive the ball, I don't know that that's going to be such an issue. And that's got to be quite troublesome for Franklin, already down 14-0 with 2.33 to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, they can't give up another score, and especially not a 98-yard yeah. <laughs> touchdown drive. A little confusion here uh, on defense. I think they only have 10 men out there on defense. Yeah, I was uh, I was counting as well. If that's the case, does Donnie Webb want to use a timeout? Nope, he's got 11. Nope. He's got all 11 out there. Just just pulled off my my toes. Bunch. Counted up on my toes there. And there's Childress. Childress Gain of a couple. The 
Nick Rocco made the tackle for Franklin. Nick Rocco, former student of mine. Second and six. Bunch to throw to number 19, coach. Number 19 is Seth Hunter, or Seth Huner, I guess. Hope I'm not butchering that last name, Mom and Dad. Well, let me tell you something. You butcher it, it is not as bad as uh, Matt Hill, <laughs> the king of butcher. <laughs> hey, but he is uh, off into the old camping world this week. <laughs> Making some s'mores on and this I cool tell you what, it is October a, night. A great night for it. Bunch on the keep. You got to break down. Get outside. Good speed. Tell you what, number six right there, that's uh, is that for uh, Independence Malik and Webster. If he would have got a block right there, Bunch would have had a few more He had more a lot yards. of green yeah. in front of him. Could have turned that upfield and gone. Brings up second down and eight as we approach the end of the first quarter. One minute, 15 seconds and counting here at Franklin High School. Bunch. Plenty of time. That middle of the field is open. Evans on the tackle. Caught by number 15, 19 again, Huner. Don't think that's close. Well, it, is it close enough for the first down? Nope. They'll call that third down and two. Looked like he might have gotten across that line, but. Here comes your defensive juggernaut, Jordan Pope, in on offense. I don't know if he would be the. Blocker or the carrier on this play? With the way Jordan is playing ball tonight, I'm not sure that I wouldn't just give it to him every time. Might not happen. Did they pull it off? It's going to be mighty close, mighty close. Well, the clock is at 30 seconds. Now, here's what I do know. I think Scott Blade, the coach for Independence, is feeling pretty confident right now. I would feel pretty confident, too, sitting on a 14-0 lead. And he's going to call fourth. And he's probably going to let the clock run out. We'll switch sides and do it on this side. Now they're going to spread it out a little bit. Will they let the clock run down? Don't know that they're going to get this one off. They are going to sit on it. So. The first half has come to a close. And here on senior night at Howard Gamble Stadium, the Independence Eagles are coming on the road and have a 14-0 lead over the Franklin Rebels. And what is our bonus coverage here on WCTV? Game of the week number two. Page and Fairview. What an old rivalry that is, going back, way back to even my day here in Williamson County. They call it the Small School Williamson County Super Bowl. <laughs> so now, a big decision by Coach Blade and the Eagles on fourth, and just one. Will they give it a shot, try to go for it. They've got the foot on the gas, Coach. Can they really rev this engine and keep this thing going? Well, light, nice euphemisms there, Coach. Um, yeah, I'm a full of them tonight. <laughs> a couple of things that could happen here. The Franklin defense could hold. That's going to give you a little boost heading in, into the second quarter. However, you pick up the first down right here, and the Rebs might be scratching their heads a little bit more because, doggone it, they just can't seem to get ahead right now. Blade right there. He is going to punt it. That is quite a shock. Hmm. I feel like he had momentum. <clears throat> and hopefully well, this he might not have wanted to pull the trigger down here the, on his own 25-yard line. Maybe give him another 10 yards and he may, might do it. However, watch the fake anyway. Good snap. Oh, and the kick is off the side of the foot. Almost hit a Rebel in the back. And it'll be down right at the 45-yard line of the ribs. Well, not what you wanted if you were independents. You wanted to bury Franklin a little bit deeper than that. But I tell you what, with the way Pope is playing on defense, huh, he's kind of putting on a show tonight, huh? They've got him lined up on the 
off on the defensive line. I think he, they've got him in nose tackle, number Maybe. 44. And I will tell you, last week, Critchlow <laughs> threw an interception early on against Ravenwood and then bounced back and threw a lot and a lot of good passes. He has an early interception again. Will he answer? Watch that middle. And, and who there did we talk about? There <laughs> Jordan he Jordan Pope is just head. wreaking havoc on that old line for Franklin. Jordan Pope made the tackle for independence. They've got to put a hat on him. Otherwise, he's going to have a, himself a field day. He's going to have 20 Maybe tackles before the night's over with. Well, you'd think Franklin might go to the birthday boy here, Big Matthews here, on this second down and 10. Luke Hill. Mm, looking for him, not going to find him. Nope, there he, he does is. find number 85. Happy birthday, Garrison Matthews. Birthday Nicely Garrison done. <laughs> Looked around, bought some time. Matthews sort of dragged across that the middle of the field there. Nice pick up there. Nice to have that big target to go to right across the middle of the field. Don't know that I wouldn't come right back to him if he's out in space. Big, tall, lanky young man, six foot five. Well, that's going to be 63 for Independence, clogging up the middle. Keegan Hudson. Keegan Hudson. The junior. I coached Keegan Hudson at Franklin Cowboys when he was about. Well, that must be why he's such a great player now. Old. Yeah, well, thank you. His dad was the center for Steve McNair at Alcorn State. Well, how about that for a little yeah. FYI? Uh, we don't get it just anywhere. That's very true. D WCTV, do we find facts like that? Nicely done. There he is again. There's Matthews again. Nicely done. Big man picking up some yardage for the Revs down to the five-yard line. Nicely done. Way to do it, birthday boy. And there's a eagle down 56 for the Eagles. Slow to get up. Brandon Sly, Sly. Yeah, there is the hot pass, what I call the hot pass, the uh, fake to the run and a quick uh, one-step and go. And they really gave Ravenwood fits with that early on. Kind of went away with it in the second half. But, uh, you know, if you could do it all over again, would Coach Blade go for it on that fourth down? That's a great question. He might be kicking himself right now about that. Well, Matthew's starting to come alive here for the Rebels. Big six foot five senior on his 18th birthday. On this last home game of the Franklin home se of the Franklin season. Another fun fact, he is committed to play basketball at uh, Lipscomb University. The Bisons. Great program down there on Belmont Boulevard. Uh, we'll call it Granny White Pike. Mm, okay. We don't want to say the B My bad, word. my bad, my bad. Granny White Pike, excuse me. Way to go, Bisons. <laughs> As a former Bison. As a former Bison. Were you a lifer? I was a lifer. A lifer. Yeah, yeah. Got a lot of money in that uh, school. No buildings named after me. No? I'm, I'm shocked. Maybe a corner. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a desk. <laughs> <laughs> With your name on the bottom yeah, of it. That's right. And a lot of gum. <laughs> Milam. You know, I give Independence credit, Coach Williams. They have stuffed the run pretty well. They have. Well. It is tough going up that center. And credit one Jordan Pope, big number 44. Actually, not not the tallest of, of defensive tackles. Only about five foot eight, five foot nine, but a fire plug in there and hard, hard, hard to move around. He gets nice and low, gets those pads low, and he is hard to push around. Rich Lowe fakes and lob it up to the corner. That's a tough throw and catch. Going to be incomplete. So third down and goal from the three, Coach Williams. You, you've Independence has stuffed the run. They have stuffed the run. I would be thinking some kind of sweep left, some kind of sweep right, see if we can stretch this. Here, I bet here, say come, here comes the stretch man, Malik Grimes, <laughs> number 11. He'll extend the field a little bit with and his speed. And scream toward that that uh, that pylon over there. 
A little Rams. confusion. Whoops. Oh, bad handoff. Fumble, Kyle Evans. Not your normal running back coach. He was Kyle probably going to maybe throw it. Chris Beavers made the tackle for independence. Kyle Evans, the backup quarterback for Franklin. So check it right here. Uh, he had no yeah, bad had, exchange, and it was all a lost cause from there. Number four. Number four, Chris Beaver sniffing that out for Independence. So now Corey Fatoni. Number 26, Corey Fatoni on the top field goal. The senior kicker. Attempt. Independence has to be feeling pretty good to limit Franklin to just this field goal attempt. It's going to be a 29-yarder. Plenty of legs. Straight and true. So with 8.34 left in this first, or second quarter, excuse me, the Independence Eagles lead 14 to three. The 29 yard field goal by Fratoni is good. The Rebels are on the board. How will the Rebels defense now, given some points, will they handle this? Again, welcome Ah, uh, brings back memories from when I was here a jillion years ago. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a jillion and six now. Tony going to line it up from the 40. This could be down there by the, uh, the student section. Heads up, guys. It's coming your way. <laughs> down in the end zone. Down in the Nerf game. Look out. Oh, end over end. Well, it made it. So the touchback here. 80 yards here for the Eagles. So Fatoni has signed up with the Tigers out, out of Missouri. So we've got Missouri uh, has gotten a pipeline somehow here in Middle Tennessee. That's, that that's true. We got the young man from Centennial headed over that way. I'll tell you what, we may want to get Joe Critchlow because the quarterback's kind of struggling. A little bit. <laughs> uh, got a couple of people at school that are Missouri fans, and they're not happy with uh, Watch Matty this Mock. Slot, re slot receiver right there across the middle. I thought that might be coming. Nobody was on it, intended for Seth Huner. But that slot receiver was wide open. Nobody nobody wanted to, to jump on him right there, so he had all that green to run to. Coach Blade has found a hole, though, in the middle of the field, it seems like. Bunch just missed him. That could have gone for a nice big gain for the, for the Eagles. Well, got a little delay here. Second and 10 from the 20. This is a nice matchup down here at the bottom of your screen, Katira and, and Johnson. Rollout bunch, oh no. my, on the run, 19. Look out for the face mask. Yep. 19, Seth Huner again, having a big night for these Eagles. A 60-yard pass. Bunch finding some time, rolling to his left. Tough little pass to make. Finding Huner on the run. Thought he may have had it, gotten away with the face mask right there. Yeah, Patterson and Evans. But a nice pickup down to the Franklin 21. The defenders on that play. And now Independence threatening yet again here in the second quarter. Already up 14 to three. Oh, the counter. Childers. A big fella, tough to bring down. Didn't see who made the stop, Coach. Alex Patterson, uh, Patterson number the nine, and Matt Gonzalez from the safety spot come up to help. Again, we talked about it earlier, the loss of Pay, Booth Page with an and injury, now, and now Philby is really creating a problem defensively. But you know what? Not that time. There's some people right there. <laughs> kind of the young rebels there getting up off the bottom of that pile. Let's see. 
these gray jerseys are giving me a hard time. Coach. Yeah. It's tough to see numbers out there on that gray jersey. They look, they look nice. They look great from right from where we are, but uh, kind of tough to make out numbers. Elliot Hazelton, maybe 58. So third and short. Bunch of all kinds of time. Oh, and a nice hit, but may have picked up the first down it is Johnson. On the, on the uh, defense was Lanham Craddock, 24. So going to bring up first and goal from about the eight, if I can, uh, my eyes don't deceive me. Which they have a chance to do at this age. <laughs> Believe me, I know. Bunch, he's going to tuck it, I believe. Oh, I thought he he's lost still, it. Nope. Oh, Ooh. in traffic, 19, Huner had it. Matt Gonzalez was on the coverage for Rebels. Gonzalez, uh, and that is the headsy play of Bunch to keep that play alive. Normally, young Second quarterback would probably gonna went ahead and tucked it and got something. He said, I'm gonna take a chance, I'm gonna throw it. Something good happened, unfortunately, that was incomplete. Toss sweep, Childers gonna cut it twice, once, twice. Sniffed that one out nicely, yeah, did the Rebels. Strung out nicely. Now third down. Independence is a nice looking squad. We had we had them two or three weeks ago with uh, Centennial. <clears throat> and they gave Centennial all they wanted. I think what you saw, uh, I wasn't there for it, but trick plays galore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Possibly our uh, highest viewed game of the week. Was that our best year? rated game of the week? Oh, I, you know, it depends. It must have been because I wasn't there. Must have been. Must have been. Must have been the talent we had that night, or lack thereof. <laughs> so <laughs> Independence looking to call a timeout here. Yeah, Coach Blade going to use one. Crucial call. Probably a wise move. What What do you do? Third and goal from about the six. I'll tell you what. I'm giving it, definitely giving it to, uh, I'm thinking Bunch is, uh, is my man right here. Might not drop a little design play for him or let him sneak on in. Well, <laughs> here's what we do know. When playoff time comes, it's the top four teams of the district. Currently got Ravenwood sitting at one, two Centennial, three and four Franklin Independence. Now, uh, Ravenwood, is at Brentwood tonight. And hmm. you think you know, Ravenwood put a W up. Centennial is what? Well, and they're playing Dixon County. And they're not. Uh, a little Centennial out of district yeah. game? No, well, no, that's a district game. Is that district now? Yeah. Okay. Centennial probably going to pull a win off that one. I would think so. So I think Brentwood and, or I think Ravenwood and Centennial will so, come through the weekend. Yeah. So uh, if you're a Centennial fan, you want to cheer for Independence because you've already beaten Independence. And if you lose to Franklin, it's all for naught. And Centennial would gain that number two spot. Mm. But if somehow Franklin can roll back here on this. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Keeper by Bunch. That's mm. too easy. We called that one, didn't we, Coach? Man, oh, man. Andrew Bunch put another one in the books at touchdown number 30 total on the season. That young man is a football player for sure. Number 53, Chris Cole coming on to try the extra point. And Chris Cole, the big fella, end over end. No Missed good. Missed that one. Well, we had one of those a couple of weeks ago. So that doesn't seem like such a big deal right now. But those are the types of things, especially in these in these county games, that might come back to haunt you. Well, you see the touchdown run by Bunch, Coach. Bunch comes in, took, gets his head of steam, and untouched. <laughs> Some, uh, who was that blocking downfield that just got the pancake and made the play just really easy? Down at the uh, bottom of your screen, wow. 
Renaissance Bank and an advanced call play solution. Chris Cole, will kick Chris Cole's coach Blade right there. Ribs could use a nice return right here. Yeah, and Chris Cole. Don't think he has quite the leg to get it there, so if you can set something up. As they're going to the right hash, I'm going to kick it short. This is going to be Patera. Run Runs. it up. The, oh, yeah. Tripped up. Four. Chris Beavers. Chris Beavers tripping up. So Franklin put a lot of points on a good defensive team by Ravenwood last week. As you see Grimes. First and ten for the Rebels. Ball nice tackle down, there. But on. so far shut out. And give the front seven for Independence credit for really holding Bryce Malum and Malik Graves for, for the most part in check. Or Malik Grimes, excuse me. Now we got to rely on the arm of Critchlow. The pocket's breaking down, coach. Not so much. Keegan Hudson, 63, on the Keegan tackle. And there you are. I tell you what, I've been watching it, coach. Uh, Honey Webb and this offensive staff have been. Rolling in offensive linemen <laughs> pretty much every play just to see is if we can get somebody to block, apparently, because Graham Baggett has entered the game. These Independence Eagles, as they say in Southern football parlance, are pinning their ears back. So second and long, Matthews on the crossing pattern underneath off the outstretched arms of Luke Hill. Luke Hill is incomplete. Adam Swayze was on the coverage. So Swayze on the coverage, just a step behind. Third and 16. So third and 16, not the place you want to be. Coach is a little bit uh, not quite as not quite the downpour tonight as we had the first time we were here a few weeks ago. Pleasant night in late October. Here we go, Critchlow, empty backfield, got time. Gonna sling it. Nice, nice catch. And that is Parker Pinnell, I believe number 18. Number 18, Parker Pinnell, six foot three, wide receiver, 12th grader. Well, that's what you can't have, uh, Coach Williams. You can't give Joe Critchlow time to sit back there in the pocket. Well, these are the types of plays that they can make, Franklin, but they're just not having the rhythm or not finding a rhythm on these plays to string enough of them together and credit the Independence defense for putting a chink in that armor right there. Nice catch by Young, quickly taken down by number 20, Stripling. So that's a better, instead of putting yourself in a third and 16 coach, they got second and three. Manageable. Got their three receivers to the left, or to the right, rather. Must have all started yet again. See, here we go. Now Franklin has started off. They've, they've hit a couple of nice plays here for some nice gains. And now we shoot ourselves in the foot and hit backwards. I believe that's on Matthews. That'll bring up second and eight for the Rebels. Ball now back at the 45. Now not so manageable. Not quite what you want. <coughs> Try it again with the trips to the right. Rob's the rollout, somebody's there. coming back. There it is. Up first down. Good hit out of bounds. But that does stop the clock with 3.37 to go. 
Quick low pass is complete to number 18, Parker Pennell. So Pennell on the reception again. Brendan Matthews running out of bounds. A gain of 10 yards on the play and a first Tennessee first down. First and 10 for the Rebels at the Independence 45. Critchlow hands off to Grimes. Nice little hole. Thought that yeah. might have been sniffed out, but Grimes made something nice out of that. He'll stop him just short of the first down there. Pick up of nine yards on the play, second and one. Now Independence defensive linemen extolling their, their compadres. Nice, nice. Good little you know sweep to the left. what that word means, extolling. Um. <laughs> <laughs> second and short. Oh, and that play was sniffed out. Everybody in the crowd in the stadium wanting a flag right there. Rick Stolen. Might have to go look that one up. <laughs> so the flag on the play going to give the Rebels an automatic first down on the defensive hold by Stribling. Oh, they did give it to him. Did they throw the flag on that? Yes. Okay. Didn't know that they had did, done that. That penalty 15 yards, that'll be a first down for the Rebels. So Franklin with a little bit of momentum here down at the Independence 21 yard line with 2.37 to go here in the second quarter. Franklin looking to add a little bit more to their point, point total before halftime. Big nice spin, runs. holy smokes, how pretty was that? And there's the scrum, it's still kind of going forward. Love to see that one again. Somebody grabbed an air right there on that. Here we go again, Coach. This is Grimes. <laughs> Whiff. Pretty spin. So first and ten. Franklin would love to get seven. A ten-point game is a lot better than 17 heading to the house. Absolutely. Absolutely. Still plenty of time. Be patient. Do what you can do. And Grinslow has nice. got it. Ten yard touchdown scamper by Joe Critchlow. Well, he wanted to go to his right, it looked like. He wanted to throw it desperately, but he saw that lane open up toward that goal line. He said, I've got to take it. Turned on the Jets, and there he went. Nice little scamper for the touchdown. And now you've got to make sure that you nail your extra point, which is not always a given in high school football. Unless you have a Division I kicker. Unless you have a Division I <laughs> kicker on your squad. So, so your new score with a 158 here in the second quarter of our WCTV Game of the Week, part two. And there, goes, there goes Critchlow. He weaves his way through two tacklers, would-be tacklers, finds that big lane that opens up, turns on the Jets, and he scoots in from 10 yards away. Nicely done. I believe they need to add um, a point to the Rebels point total so far. It's 20 to 10 here with a minute 58 to go in the second quarter. Well, I know that Lance down in the truck in graphics, he's got it right. Getting a little cool out here tonight, isn't it, Coach? Ah, oh, I love it. <laughs> love it. Here's a question you got to raise, Coach Williams. Did, in, did Franklin score too quick? <laughs> huh. Good question. I guess we'll find out over the next minute 58. Oh, an opportunity to have a return. Well, you know, in the uh, college and the NFL broadcast, they have that uh, 
yard line, that magical yard line that they they have to get to get in kind of field goal range. I think if you're independent, you've got to be at the 10. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you got to go a long That's way. That's where their uh, imaginary red line is. Yeah. <clears throat> Our red line is broken in the graphics department. Must be. Tonight. That's all right. We don't need no stinking red line. No. Bunch. Going to bring it. Look out. Well, that's <clears throat> going to be high. Johnson. And a hit by Katera. <clears throat> There's a buddy pass for you. Thought that might be a good matchup, matchup tonight, Katera and Coach Webb is and just Johnson. Holding, holding his breath he didn't get another personal foul call. Katera with some nice sportsmanship. He realized that his receiver had gone up and he came down and hit him in the back of the legs, which is never pretty for the receiver. It's always going to end up poorly or badly. Punch out pattern. Nice catch. By 27 for Independence. 27 is uh, Daniel Wright, 11th grader. Patterson pushes him out. Third and four. I thought Wright had stayed in a little bit longer, but either way, plenty of time. Bunch. Going to throw it behind Johnson. Could have run it, but I believe he was past the line of scrimmage. I believe so, too. We're going to back him up on that one. Bunch could have taken a – could have run easily for the first down, kept the drive alive. Now he's going to be uh, – So that was a loss of down as yeah. well, wasn't it? So fourth down after they tack on the yards, and now we have seen – the special teams of Independence <laughs> struggle. Well, Coach, you mentioned it before. Did Franklin score too quickly? I guess we've, I guess I guess we've uh, answered our question now. Absolutely. Quick enough where they get the ball back and can cut this thing to three. It's now fourth and nine. Number 19, Seth Hino will come on the Tell you what, Luke Hill standing Luke on about his 46, Coach. He's licking his chops. Another pull Another punt. shank. And this is short field for Franklin, 45 yards. Let's see a former Franklin, Franklin Rebel down there on the sideline, Maurice Fitzgerald. Longtime high school writer for the Nashville, for the Nashville Tennessean. Thank the Franklin sponsors for the 2014-15 season. Kid to kid, Guy M. Land, Wildling So a big stop needed by Independence. A touchdown by Franklin to make this game really, 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 really interesting heading into the second half. Look out for Matthews. Hope. Looking. Oh, man. Nice. Right on the money. Carson Young down to the 15. Critchlow, beautiful pass, put it right in the bucket. And this is exactly what Franklin needs heading into the halftime, right before or starting after starting off the first first quarter so poorly. Low snap, corner of the end zone, touchdown, 15 yards, Luke Hill. Very pretty. Did Franklin score too quick? <laughs> they may have. 55 Certainly not seconds, that time. 55 seconds remain. Luke Hill nicely done down there in the corner of the end zone. Way to call that in. And we talked about it before, Franklin on senior night, all of these seniors coming in, having their names called and being uh, escorted out on the, at the beginning of the game, not used to their usual routine. Started off slowly, but now the seniors stepping up for these Rebels, and they've cut this game to three points with 55 seconds remaining before they head into the halftime. 
Critchlow back, finding his receiver, lofting up perfectly. And hauling it in there at the corner of the end zone for the beautiful touchdown pass and catch. Well, I'll tell you the difference that I've seen in Franklin the last two drives. Critchlow's had a little time to throw the ball. So I don't know who Coach Webb finally got in the uh, mixed bag of uh, <laughs> linemen that he shuffled up, but he found five, I think, that could hang in there and give Mr. Critchlow time to throw the ball. And when that happens, these senior receivers for Franklin gaining some confidence with every catch. And they've got to like, you've got to like that if you're pulling for the Franklin Rebels tonight. Mr. Sussman, can we ask you to step to the press box? Mr. Sussman, can we ask you to step to the press box? What a packed house tonight, huh? Great weather. I mean, this is week nine. And I have yet to really, really be cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually we, <laughs> we're working on some cold nights, but man. Got my sleeves rolled up, ready to go. Oh, just, just inside that, that end zone. <clears throat> so well, does Franklin's defense step up right here? Yeah. They or can this high-powered Independence offense do something with these last with these last 55 seconds? Bunch. Plenty of time, middle Oops. screen. Lots of room, lots of blockers. Woo. Nice tackle out there by. Bunch of passes complete to number 22, Don Childers. Uh, Don Childers. Matt, Gonzalez, made Matt Gonzalez, he's the one on the tackle. He's got an equipment problem, Matt, Coach. He's trying to get out. And wow. And they'll call a timeout right before the. Way to pick that up, Coach. And I didn't see him coming yeah, off the field he, he right there. He was running off the field the like he, something happened to his helmet. Donnie Webb, Coach Webb is saying, Matt, all you got to do is tell the back judge you have an equipment problem. They'll stop the clock, and I didn't <laughs> have to use a timeout. Well, Teachable moment there. Yeah, it is a teachable moment, unfortunately, in a stressful situation. <laughs> Greta, you receive one free month of unlimited personal training at the New Coral Springs facility, which will be opening in November. It's a tough, tough lesson to learn. Coach Webb trying to rally the troops, say, listen, we can score. We just got to make a stop. Thank you, Lawrence Therapy, for sponsoring the Franklin High School Quarterback Club. So here we go. First and ten. New safety out there for Gonzalez, who came off. That's going to be 48. Lofton Cotton, the sophomore. There you go, young fella. You got 40 seconds. Don't let him get by you. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going right up the middle. Ooh. Well, not such a bad, not such a bad deal because you've stopped the clock. Yeah. I coach Lofton Cotton as well in uh, Little League football. Again, a premier defensive yeah. back. Lofton Cotton, back in Little League. Tell us a story, Coach. Running back, Yep. linebacker. He was good. All he was good. I think he was about as big as he is now. He was <laughs> a big guy. Bunch scrambles back across the field. Wow. Was that a catch? I believe so. Catch? Nate Johnson, is that correct, Coach? That is Duke? Nate Johnson. Woo. Now we got some Nate clock. Johnson. The clock becomes a uh, an enemy to the Eagles in a 29 seconds here. Clock's going to run. Uh-oh, trading out some players quick. Bunch, plenty uh -oh. of time, Trouble. don't take the sack. You can't take the sack if you're Bunch. He's gonna loft it up, and a catch, and he... We had a break, no, get out of bounds. Yeah, well, we're gonna have a flag, <laughs> though, Coach. <laughs> Got a flag Late right... Flag. flag right in the holding area. 
flag on the close side of the field the on your screen. But again, that stops the clock for Independence and allows them to yeah. regroup a little bit See, with we 11 got seconds to An go. Ineligible receiver downfield. Yeah, that's eligible what happens when you downfield. when you Tuck run around in the back in the backfield trying to make something happen. Again, I'm wondering if Bunch just didn't want to go ahead and tuck it, take that 10 yards and get out of bounds. But, man, you're a gunslinger like that. Now back at the 41-yard line, first and 15. Nobody has this slot receiver covered up right here. <laughs> Nobody, except the safety who's about 20 yards back. And there he guess is. Guess who they go to. The slot receiver, great call, Coach Williams. <laughs> Down to the – to about the 16. 16 yard line. That's number 19, Seth Huner. Big night on the night. So you've got four seconds to make something happen right here. We talked about that magic red line being the <laughs> 10 yard line. That's very true. Is that the 16? That would be a 33 yarder, Coach. Uh, Chris Cole. Well, you've got to take your opportunity. The big fella. You've got to take your shot right here if you, if you can uh, do if it. If you take your shot, it's halftime. I just don't think it's a two-play situation here with four seconds left. Well, do you trust your kicker enough to try and put three points okay, on the coach, board? Okay, Coach, you made your point. You made your point. <laughs> <laughs> Can you borrow Corey for Tony if you're independent? <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be cheating yeah. and against the rules. And unheard of. And unheard of. And unprecedented. I want to give a shout out to the press box of Franklin. Normally, nothing in there to eat. What do we have tonight? It's National Pizza, Coach, down there. You're coming up the steps. I talked to the uh, the people of the Franklin Press Box, long time people. They've been up there. Jay Johnson and his crew been up here forever. Jay Johnson, the 1989 graduate of Franklin High School, took our Rebels to the uh, 1989 AAA State Basketball Championship. Even more importantly than that, I know he had zero <laughs> to do with that pizza being in there. <laughs> Somebody came up there and did it. You earned a little bonus points with that uh, big pickup from National Pizza. Amen. Again, if you're now, just Now, here's what I had tonight. Uh oh, uh oh. I was out at Mama Nims this evening. I don't even know what that says, Coach. What's that mean? That means my mother's house. Oh, gotcha. And Mama Nim had some nice vegetable soup tonight. Some, some late autumn vegetable soup that flat out got all up in my face. <laughs> a couple of times. Well, Out with my niece and nephew, playing in a great big old pile of leaves that their granddaddy had raked up for them. There you go. Good times, good times, memories. <laughs> <laughs> On a cool, crisp October night. Well. You called it. We're a little bit out of field goal range. We're on the right hash. We're not going to give it a shot. We're going to try to throw it up. You got three receivers top of your screen and three defenders. Watch they, Bunch take off here. Give Bunch enough time. He's going to there throw it. There it is. Lateral. <laughs> and he's Still done. fighting. Yeah. Good first half of football. Nicely done, both squads. We've got a good game. Absolutely. So if you're looking for a shootout in the second half, get ready. Your score at Franklin High School, the Independence Eagles lead 20 to 17, and we'll be right back after Pets of the Week. everyone, my name is Marcy and this is Christina Ricci. She is a beautiful gray and silver tabby. She's approximately six years old and she came here to the shelter in June of this year, of course. <laughs> um, so folks, she has been here for five months. She is a very sweet kitty, however, she is rather independent, meaning that everything has to be on her terms and that includes uh, being, getting pets and sitting on your lap. Um, it seems like she's really enjoying this right now. She doesn't get uh, 
too many pets very often. We just have so many cats in the building right now. Um, I have been told that she is not overly fond of cats or dogs, but that she does well with children. Um, so I would love for you to come and see her. Um, her adoption fee has been waived along with all the cats and kittens in the shelter until we can get our numbers down. So I wish you'd please come and see Miss Christina. Hi everyone, this is Adele. She is a sweet little Rhodesian Ridgeback mix um, that came to the shelter a couple of months ago. She's approximately three years old and she gets along well with children and she gets along well with dogs. Now, in the case of the children, I notice she's a little bit nervous, so I'd probably recommend um, maybe teenagers and older, um, just because, um, I don't know, she just seems a little bit, um, a little bit skittish. Uh, she's a really sweet dog, loves the outside, loves to go for walks. I'd probably recommend a fenced-in yard for her, unless you just love going for walks. <laughs> Uh, her adoption fee is $31. It's part of our October 31, 31 days of October special. That's what it's called. And all of our dogs' um, adoption fees are 31. So we'd love for you to please come and see sweet little Adele, especially if you are looking for a walking partner. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Second half action of our WCTV game of the week, number two. As the Independence Eagles lead at Franklin, 20 to 17. The kick off by Cole, taken by Katera. Nowhere to run except the outside. He's got to get a wall. He wants to take it. Katera's changing direction. Again. Oh, and he ended up taking the uh, high road. <laughs> A lot of dancing, nice return there. Gutierrez, as he heads out to the outside, looks like he could have picked up a wall right there and then starts dancing again. Take it up, take it up inside there, see what you can get out of it because it's gonna, it's gonna put her out right about there. But his nice return, young man showing a lot of heart, a lot of effort, trying to get that ball up the field. So, tail of two quarters. Paul Brees and Michael Williams here, bring you the action. I'll tell you what, Independence kind of controlled the first quarter. Franklin came back with two scores of their own. But if there's anything they tried to jumpstart, it's the run game, Coach. It is the run game. They look like they had everything going there. The, the end of the uh, second quarter, Franklin picked up a great deal of momentum to cut the lead of Independence to 20-17. Uh, to 17. So just a three-point deficit. Could have been disastrous as Independence jumped out quickly, 14-0, and then Franklin jumped on the board with four, with a uh, with a long field goal. <clears throat> Independence went back up on top, scoring a, a touchdown, but unable to capitalize on the PAT, and that's where we stand. Well, and Franklin with two scores in the second quarter to make this game 20 to 17. Well, Luke Hill, the intended receiver. Nice. Luke Hill, and the recipient of one of. Um, yep. One of, one of Pritchlow's touchdown passes there to cut this lead to 20 to 17 at the end of the first quarter, or the first half rather. So a big third down and seven. It was tough to stop Franklin late in the second quarter. Pritchlow connected on a number of nice passes there in the second quarter. One of his main receivers being big uh, Matthews. And now on the catch, breaks it for a little extra. Drug out of bounds, crossing midfield, Parker Pinnell. Now let's see if Franklin can put together some momentum here or put, put together a little rhythm. They had some nice, nice plays there in the first quarter, but just not able to string enough of them together. Of course, credit Independence defense for having a lot to do with that. Mm. Grimes trying to jump. Jordan Pope on the tackle. He's probably had at least six tackles on the day and a couple for a loss. Jordan Pope, 
All five foot eight, 220 pounds of him down there. A fire plug of a young man. Tough to push around. Making some nice tackles. Making his presence felt on the defensive side of the football tonight. Coach Blade, the offensive coach, he is hoping and begging that they can get a stop as the Franklin offense has been in control. And a strike. Critchlow to Garrison Matthews for a gain of about seven. Once again, Garrison Matthews celebrating his 18th birthday here on senior night at Franklin High School. You see Critchlow right there just checking things out. Check down to his favorite target. You know, sometimes that happens, Coach. You, you go through your reads, and then you go right back to the guy that always seems to be there. <laughs> Dance with the one that brung you. Oh, Chris Lowe on the keeper. Going to slide maybe for the first down. Yep. So the chains are on the move. Coach Webb. Right there. Well, we mentioned in the first quarter, Franklin starting off with uh, senior night tonight. And at the beginning of the game, we had about 150 seniors, all from the band, the dance team, the cheerleaders, and of course the football team. Everybody being called out one by one, which is what you do on senior night, but probably got into Franklin's routine a little bit, which caused them to be a little slow out of the gates. But now they seem to have found their footing. Rich Lowe dumps it, grimes, dances, spins. Boy, he is tough First to bring down. down. <laughs> Getting up and showing a little bit of emotion after that little run. Got some great speed and some shifty moves. Well, we talked about it at halftime. Coach, last team with the ball could be. That's very well true. The winner of this game. Critchlow with his three receivers to the top. The quick out to Young. He got a couple. Nice pickup of about five. Well, Independence started off this game like gangbusters, and now that they had to have all of the confidence in the world there in that first quarter, but now they're kind of questioning them themselves as they are struggling to find some confidence on defense and Franklin ramping things up. Switches all three receivers down to his left this time, does Critchlow. Blitzes on that outside corner, and that's gonna be, had to force that one a little bit. A little mix up on the play between uh, Carter Bowman and Luke Hill. That could have been disastrous. Well, they're the Rebel fans. Jersey night, from what I was told. <laughs> <laughs> Wear your favorite jersey. I was never a cold weather fan. I could never, I could never come out in just a tank top or t-shirt out on these chilly nights. I wasn't that tough. So Franklin facing a third and five from the 14-yard line. A little sweep. Evans. And Independence sniffs that out. Sniffs that out nicely. 43. That's going to be Hunter Dupree and seven. Landon Gidry. String it out. Now fourth down. Coach, a field goal ties it. And here comes the unit. As you saw, Kyle Evans go to his left. Unable to pick up the first down, so Franklin comes out and tries to knot this one up at 20 with 7.30 to go here in the third quarter. Ball spotted at the 19, going to make this a 29-yard try for Fratoni. Plenty of leg to get this. And then some. Oh, be nice. So that knots us up. Yep, new score here in our WCTV Game of the Week. 7-12 remaining in the third quarter. The Rebels answer. And it is now tied up 20 to 20. So we'll start it all over, just like when we started at 0 and 0 to 0. 
Well, got a brand new game. We didn't think we were going to have much of a game after those first two quick scores by Independence in the first quarter. But Franklin has come back to tie this game up here in the middle of the third at 20 all. Again, this is game number two of our WCTV Games of the Week. Game number two, the Yellow Jackets and the Patriots. Yeah, locking it down. On tap in the other part of the county. And the Super Bowl of small schools. The Wisconsin. Super Bowl of small schools. Uh, good times, good times. I miss uh, going to Fairview. Great Mexican restaurant up there, Coach. Uh, Matt Hill and I have. Uh, I bet you and Hill could put on a show at a Mexican we, restaurant. We made a dent. Uh, I don't think that's why they invite us back to I Fairview. Bet, I bet they lose <laughs> money on you guys. Uh, <coughs> well. <coughs> Matt Hill, one of the best middle school math teachers in all of the county. Out enjoying a little camping weather with his family tonight. Thank him for uh, letting me sit in his, yeah, in his place. Absolutely. absolutely. Anytime. So first and 10, the Eagles will trot out into your 20-yard line again. Corey for Tony, man. Having well, him on your team just makes a big difference. Andrew Bunch here for the Independence Eagles. Leading this squad up and down the field. He's got a couple of weapons, but Bunch has really put this team on his shoulders this game. He of the of a score in the first quarter. Great leader for this team. Oh my goodness. Oh, backside blitz. Check it out, coach. Who is that? 84. David Bain. I used to call him the magician. David Bain, six foot two, junior. I used to call him the magician in uh, middle school. David Blaine was hot, he ah, was yes. hot back in the day. Oh yeah, when he put himself in a big block of ice and stay there for <laughs> eight days. <laughs> yes. And lose his mind. Uh, yes, yes. That's that was fine magic right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bunch gonna keep it and a tackle on the plate on. Going to be number 39, Mitch Rossi. So the sophomore oh, making Rossi. an impact. Mitch Rossi, former student of mine. Way to go, Mitch Rossi. Good tackle. Well, we were singing Bunch's praises a little while ago, but this Franklin defense has stepped up here. Plenty of time. Johnson is going to be hit. He's going to be stopped. By Evans. Nope, they're going to push him forward. They're going to give him the first down. Coach Webb not happy about that third down conversion. Nate Johnson, a great weapon. And wide receiver for these Eagles. And they'll say they jumped. Back them up five yards, do it all over again. That's 55, Dion Thompson, the O-lineman, the leaguer. So halfway through this third quarter, Paul Brees, Michael Williams, the whole WCTV crew bringing you the so-called game, game of the of week. The week. <laughs> a little cross action bunch and the catch by 19 is that Huner again that is Seth Huner again another 11th grader for the Eagles He's gonna bring up second down <coughs> Franklin bringing pressure off the corner that time but bunch able to roll to his left and find Huner across the middle there for the nice game. Well, they're going to give him the first down. It's a bunch. Going with that little option right there. Childers getting strung out. First slow down by 45 Beam. Well, this is a different Franklin defense that we're seeing here in this third quarter than we saw in the first quarter. 
Independence marched methodically down the field for 80 yards in the score, their first series of the game, and now struggling quite a bit as Franklin defense, Franklin's defense is, is stepping up. So that front three doing a nice job on the run game. Katera on the tackle. Katera sniffed that one out. He had a nice five-yard head start on that one. Huner. <coughs> Still a nice up. way to hang on by Huner. Picks up a nice, uh, you say five, even though Katera played it about as good as you can. Now third and five, coach. You're almost at midfield. You've got an uncovered slot receiver again. And that's who they go to, a little over his head. Well, that pressure on the outside gets to Bunch. And now here comes the punting unit on a fourth down and five. Now be careful. This is a great time to fake this punt. So this is what these coaches have to tell these young men for Franklin. Be wary. Jake Brickle, the sophomore. The old running. <laughs> Get away. It'll be marked down at the 20 yard line. So good decision by Coach Blade and his staff to go ahead and punt it. Now they got to find a way to stop Joe Critchlow and company. Up here getting out of our mind. Critchlow, plenty of time. Pocket collapses. He's going to take off. He's going to gain the first down and more. Run out at the 40, gain of 20. So Critchlow looking a little bit about look, looking a little bit like his counterpart Bunch on that play right there. A gain of 20 yards on the play. A first Tennessee, first down. First and ten for the runners. Ball at the 40 yard line. Critchlow very wisely going out of bounds without getting hit. Franklin finding a little confidence now on offense. Critchlow with his three receivers up top. <clears throat> Critchlow, plenty of time again. Offensive line doing good, its job. Good coverage. And defender slips. Pinnell picking up the first down after a gain of 14 on the pitch and catch. Number 25, Adam Martin made the stop. Martin on the tackle. These Franklin receivers can catch the can catch the football, but a couple of times we've seen a little bit too much dancing. These young men need to go ahead and get up field, trust their speed, trust their strength, and get what they can. When you try to make too much happen like that, you're liable to lose the football. Well, the run right there on by Milan. If there's something that hasn't worked tonight, Coach, it's been the run. Right up the gut, and you can credit Jordan Pope to most of that. With a maybe a hint of uh, 63, Keegan Hudson. But, yeah, they have uh, shut that interior between the tackles down. That's exactly hard. right. They're not having it, neither of those two young men, on that defensive front, on that defensive front for Independence. Second and eight. Critchlow, time. Again, Pope bringing the pressure. Critchlow dancing. An incomplete Critchlow attempt to Milam. Adam Martin was on the coverage. Brings up a third down for Franklin. Almost a coverage sack. Almost made. a coverage Look sack. At, those old linemen, coach, they can't hold them forever. Not, a, not forever, that's true. Critchlow trying to do what he, what he could and comes up incomplete on the pass. I feel if you get a good four or five seconds, you got to make a decision. Critchlow didn't feel very comfortable, so he checked down to the bottom receiver, Milam, and incomplete. Matthews at the tight end position. Wow, oh. Pope, he and just he goes down. blew by. 56. 
That young man, number 44, has been the defensive player of the game. He must have 10 tackles this game. It's Graham Baggett that got beat by Pope. Got his hands full, I tell you what. Just too low. Pope is a is a fire plug of a young man. Nice and punt. That is going to be intended for a fair catch. He can't do that. Oh my! And got to let that a, one go. That's what I'm saying. You got Jordan Pope for Independence playing great ball. Corey Fatoni right there going to change the game. Just about making an appearance every, uh, <laughs> you know. Two plays for every quarter he's probably been in. Good defensive player, man. They can pin the offense way down deep in their own territory. <clears throat> you got to excuse me. I've been fighting a little bit of a head cold all week there, Coach. Well, Coach, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forgive you this time. Good run. Oh, Look out. Watch him get downhill. Going to be tripped up at the 25 by Evans or Gonzalez. Check that. If there's something you're down and you're backed up at their, your own end zone, you can't give up the big play. Not at all. 22, Dom Childress coming along the left side here. This young man has tremendous speed. He gets his pads down low and he runs straight when he has to. He can make a man miss every once in a while, but the young man knows how to run straight. He knows how to run fast and he gets his team out of trouble right there. Well, Childers actually is limping off the field on the far side, and that would be a blow. <laughs> Not a good sign. Again, we have an uncovered receiver right here. Now they come over to pick him up. <clears throat> and Franklin sniffs, sniff, sniffs. Franklin sniffs this one out. I'm the one with the sniffs. 54 for the Rebels. Connor Polk on the tackle. Connor Paul, another former student of mine. Coach, you've been teaching way too long. No kidding. Connor was a, he was a great seventh grade language arts student. <laughs> Good runner too. Paul in a three point stance, that middle linebacker. Watch out. Uh, he's covered, middle of the field. Huner gonna pick up the first down. Well, quick quarter, Coach. We've got about 42 seconds remaining. Not, much, not many penalties. Both teams driving up and down the field, keeping this clock running for a very fast third quarter. Well, you see it right there. They've hit that middle of the field. They put a lot of attention on Nate Johnson, number two. And Huner has been the recipient of that double coverage. Twenty-seven. That's going to be Na not Nick. Uh, Daniel Wright. Daniel Wright. Yeah. So that'll bring us down to the end of the third quarter, and we head into this fourth quarter tied up at twenty all. Well, blink of an eye, this quarter is over. So fourth quarter action coming up. We're right back where we started as the Independence Eagles 20 and the Franklin Rebels 20 here on Senior Night on our WCTV Game of the Week Part 2. As Paul Brees, Michael Williams, Tyler, camera one, Raquel, camera two, Boyce, camera six, I don't know. <laughs> camera 20 yard line. And then of course, Andrew Kachumba down there on the uh, another field uh, camera down there. Got his cape. I think he's a little chilly down there. Boys, boys, turn around. There we go, boys. We got you now. But we got to see. Uh, can we get a shot of Kachumba? That's the question. Kachumba's down there in the Superman cape. Yeah, he's looking mighty. There's uh, there's my teacher glasses right there. That's what I. Can't live without teacher, these days. You got your teacher classes? I got my teacher glasses. Oh on. man, Kachumba. There's Kachumba. You're supposed to be uh, a nonpartisan uh, employee of WCTV, Kachumba. Kachumba with his Franklin. Superman Rebels cape on tonight. Yeah, he's giving me the, sh the shake off. He's like, forget it. <laughs> I'm a rebel. So here we go, second and five. There's the open man that you've been talking about. You're gonna pick up maybe one. Rock's going to run. 
Man, this game has come to a screeching halt as far as scoring has gone. <clears throat> Both of these defenses have tightened up considerably. Off that left side. Crazy. Oh, he's going to be tripped up. Nope, he's digging. That's going to be Gonzalez. And that's going to be, they're going to bring him forward. Man, He'll Coach pick Lev up the fourth, not happy first down. About the spot. So needed two, got 2.1. Well, you're right. It might come down, this game might come down to the last. Who has the ball last? All the, the go pattern. Nate Johnson, 48 yard. Touchdown. Nicely done. Pitch and catch, just that easy. And that's the second time tonight that Andrew Bunch has hit Franklin on that, Johnson. on that. Oh. oh, oh no, no, you're catching the defense, Franklin's defense off, you're right. Well, that's the second time tonight that he's hit him on that, um, on that pump fake, and they've, and they've bitten on it. Number 53, Chris Cole, will come on to try the extra. <coughs> Excuse me. The extra point, and that's all important. You talked about earlier in high school football. Chris Cole got a kicker by committee. Well, do we have a replay of that, or did we already? I think we may have already seen it. A set of keys has been turned into the press box, so if you are missing a set of keys, they are found in the lady press for this evening. So we do have a set of car keys here in the press box. Well, oh. there's Bunch leading his receiver perfectly. And Gonzalez beat on the play. And Nate Johnson, was that his second touchdown yes, of sir. tonight? That was his second touchdown catch of the night. So your new score with 11-01 here in the fourth quarter, the Independence Eagles now on top. 27 to 20. Cole to kick off, right hash. Andrew Bunch, quite the quarterback. He's impressed us quite a few times this year. Short kickoff to Katera. And he is going to be pushed out of bounds around the. 27 yard line. Well, Franklin again has to regroup after that quick scoring strike. Down by a touchdown with 10.56 to, to go in the ball game. Can Critchlow lead these Rebels the way Bunch has led the Eagles? First and 10 for the Rebels, ball's around 27. So here goes Pritchlow, shotgun, fake to Milan, middle of the field, going to be caught. Nice catch, Carson Young. Carson Young takes quite a lick, hangs on to the ball there. So maybe, who could say, maybe these defenses are wearing down a little bit. Could be right. Here's what I do know. When you can't get pressure on the quarterback, both these quarterbacks are going to pick you apart. Both experienced quarterbacks both know how to lead their squads. Grimes stretching it out. This is not working for Franklin. They've done this a number of times, and Independence is able to sniff this out each and every time. All right, that's uh, Gidry, Beavers, and, of course, Jordan Pope as they lose three yards on the play. Loss of five on the play, second and 15. But you might as well try to keep them honest because the, the run up the gut has not worked with these, these defensive linemen of independence. Second and 13, Grimes. Milam, and he's going to be stopped. 
44, Pope, 63, Hudson. A dynamic duo inside. That'll bring up third down and... You'll see it right here. Third down and about 14, third down and about 16. The O-line of Franklin has really struggled those last two run plays, but give the Indy deep credit. Now, we had a third and 16 conversion by Franklin earlier. They're gonna need another one to stay in this game. And a toss out to Grimes in open space. He's gonna spin, but this time taken down. Taken down, Independence defense stepping up. And that's Ben Beavers, the senior. And the, after the big catch by Carson Young to get him out of the uh, hole down there, it is fourth and 13. Well, now you've got your, your punt weapon for the Rebels. And here comes Johnson, fair catch. Right there at the 20 yard line. So 8.36 here, fourth quarter. Indy's got a shot to put this game away. And here, not, not to jinx anybody. Thought you were gonna say here in Knoxville. No, here, no, no, no not yet, Coach, not yet. <laughs> Alabama's gonna have their, you know, roll there. <laughs> but not to jinx anybody, but turnovers. We've just had that one interception by Critchlow early on. Yeah. And man. You might, you the, think somebody might be due Franklin here? Franklin D would love to see a uh, turnover here. Mm. Well, trying, a, ripping, trying yeah. to rip that ball out. Great tackle. Rossi and Paul on the tackle. Children's hanging on for dear life there. So second and seven and a half. Oh my, there's a false start. That's coming back. That's big Pope right there going yeah. up the middle. A little too quick. I think uh, Childers took off too quick, even though he wasn't even getting the ball, Coach. Legal procedure, yep, they're going to back him up. Back him up on that one. Well, if you can't get a turnover, take the penalty, back him up. Well, with the game that Pope is having tonight, especially on the defensive end, why don't you just go ahead and give it to him on the offensive yeah. end too? <laughs> Absolutely. Because he's got some good, good juju going on tonight. Oh my. Another pump fake, and that might, well, I thought they might throw the flag on that one. Yeah, not gonna happen. Nate Johnson really stopped his route and got tangled up with uh, Katera. That's been a good battle tonight between those two. It's third and 13. Now Independence with a long third, third down, third and 13. A little while ago, I thought maybe both of these defenses were a little bit tired, but now both of these defenses have kind of stepped up. Oh! Ooh, nearly picked off. Gonzalez off the tip. Ball couldn't reel it in. So fourth down, we've talked about the questionable special teams of Independence. Man, oh man, is Franklin going to get good field position if they could just hold par right here? Here's Luke Hill. I believe he's had a touchdown pass touchdown reception tonight. Huner, the receiver, out to kick for Independence. Gets Not away bad. a good one. Yeah, and Luke's great. Luke's going to have to let that one go. Coach, I think Luke Hill, the, uh, the return man, was expecting a different kicker. I think <laughs> he certainly wasn't expecting, to, expecting the ball to go that far. So nice kick by the Independence team. That's going to put the Franklin Rebels at about the 34-yard lines. 60 
six like yards to pay dirt to tie this thing up. And the Rebel offense is trotting out. Well, what can happen here in the last seven minutes and 21 seconds of this ball game? Critchlow. Big catch by Pinnell. And slow to get up. Oh, he's up. Watson on the tackle, Pinnell. Good throw, only gained a eight yards. Check Wait, that nine. Probably need to give a little quick shout to the Franklin band. They can't do them justice right now, but what a show they these guys put on during the halftime. Keep by Critchlow. He's going to gain the first down. We're about to gain a seven. You're right, Coach. The band <laughs> of Franklin, well, both bands, but, man, Franklin, here at home, they put on the show. And I, apparently they're getting on a bus right after this game and heading to Indianapolis. Headed up to Indy, headed up to Lucas Oil Stadium for a, a massive national contest, yeah. one in which they finished, uh, I believe, 15th in last year. And they've got quite a, sh quite a show going on this year as well. Great musicians, great showmanship all the way around. Pritch low, plenty of time. Underneath route to Matthews. Stiff arm, and he's going to be short. <laughs> Student body section for Franklin trying to cheer their Rebels on to get that tying score. As the clock now becomes their enemy. Halfway here to the fourth quarter of our WCTV Game of the Week Part 2 here at Franklin High School. The Eagles of Independence League 27 to 20. Matthews again lined up tight there. What? Oh. Pass intended for uh, Luke Hill. Is that, or check that Parker Pinnell. Let me tell you something, uh, Coach Williams. I don't know if you caught it last week's uh, Ravenwood Franklin game. Luke Hill with a one handed catch last week that I was shocked. <laughs> and somebody did not tweet out or send it to ESPN Top Ten. It was unbelievable. Was that, the, was that definitely the play of the week? Uh, it was not the play of the week, actually. <laughs> the Van Jefferson 90-yard touchdown uh, it, it got outvoted by Creed, the, uh -huh. the head man. There's Grimes dancing. Run Shakes, straight, Banks. Straight. Nicely done. <laughs> Shifty back. Nice speed, gets up field. Fun to watch this young man run. Chopped his, chops his steps with some shifty hips and able to get up field, get his squad a first down with 5.30 to go in the game. Franklin kind of up against it here. They've got to put one in the end zone quickly and hope to get it back. There's Matthews across the middle. middle Big the six field. foot five of him. Oh! Took one right in the gut right there. Defensive play by Ben Beavers. And number 25, Adam Martin. Well, Matthews showing a great deal of courage going across the middle like that. Stretching out that six foot five frame. But when you catch a catch a shoulder pad in the in the gut right there, those are tough to hang on to. Yep. So second and ten. Motion is Hill. Pretty slow. Time steps up. Middle of the field. Oh, oh and knocked almost down off. by Ben Beavers again. He has shown up the last two plays defensively. So as you have mentioned, Chris Beavers. My name is Ben Beavers. Beavers <laughs> building a dam right here. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are amateurs, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> so 
So an all-important third and ten. I'm going to call two down, four down territory. Right Think here. so? Pritchlow sprints to his left, squares his shoulders, back to the middle, wide open. Touchdown, Rebels, Luke Hill, 29 yards. Backside. Boy, credit Critchlow with that one. Moved out to his left, bought some time with his feet, able to find, was it Luke Hill down there? Able to find Luke Hill standing flat-footed in the end zone. And Franklin is a PAT away from tying this game at 27. Both of these quarterbacks not allowing their teams to go down tonight. Tony, kick into the stream. Now, here comes your missed field goal or your missed PAT by Independence. Independence makes that field goal in the first quarter, and they still have a one-point lead here. Folks, that's why we pay you the big money. Isn't it, though? Question. So those special teams, all important right now. Sometimes you look at those point after tries and you don't think much of them if they go, if they're blocked or if they're missed. It's only one point, right? But one point would make all the difference in the world in this game. Here comes Critchlow rolling to his left. Trying to, trying to buy some time. They bear down on him, finally unloads. And there's Luke Hill for his second touchdown of the night. And the Rebels and the Independence Eagles tied at 27 all with five minutes to go Worst here in this all important Williamson County showdown. Worst case scenario. Coach, is Independence, you know, they got five minutes. They are not guaranteed a three. If Franklin had the ball, they would be guaranteed a three, you know, inside the 20. I think Independence is going to have to uh, score a seven to uh, make things happen. Because score something. I think Fatoni could line it up. Place it, hit, hit. His red line would probably be at the 35. <laughs> so now... Independence has been in a ton of close games. Sometimes they uh, prevail. Others, like the Blackman High School games, they had the big lead and could not finish. Counter. Good counter. Childers. Oh, and he's a step away and a tackle by Gonzalez from the safety spot. Childress gets out in space like that, nobody's catching him. He is a home run hitter for sure. Great call by Coach Blade and the staff. Well, Coach, we might, might we be in for a little bit of extra football tonight? Well, probably. I love it, it's always free. Here comes the screen. Childers just can't reel it in. Had it set up, Coach. He had some plow makers out in front of him. Middle, and the pressure got to him, Coach, I think. Coming to the outside, that was Rossi off the end and made Bunch really uh, release it a little bit quicker than he wanted to. Two times Franklin's defense able to get into the face of Bunch, forcing him to get rid of it quicker than he wanted to. This Franklin crowd coming to life now. Third and 10. Knowing they've got a big down, big and distance. Bunch gonna turn, keeps, nope, throws. Was that picked it's intercepted. off? It's intercepted by Franklin. Exactly what the Rebels needed right there. Connor Polk with the interception, coach right here at the bottom. He's gonna just pick it off. 
Was that Connor? And it was Connor Falk, 54. The sophomore, he was a little questionable with the foot. His foot hurts no more. Foot's feeling pretty good after yeah. a nice interception <laughs> like that to give your, give your team the ball at the four, at the 40 yard line. With now, 419 to go in the game. What I'm talking tie, about, Coach. Tie score. They really don't have to get too far. Probably 15 yards. They're set up for business. Yep, going to keep it on the ground. But you know what? You can't lose yards. The Indy defense has come to play in the trenches. Jordan Pope at the bottom of the pile. <laughs> I'm going to give Jake Heckman a shout out as well, 54. He was around there. It's always good though when Pope's got you around the ankle. Somebody yeah. can as the clock ticks down under four minutes to play. Rich Lowe going to be not on the play. Looks That's like Franklin right. might be called for holding right yeah. here. Oh, it's going to be defensive holding the way that the crowd is reacting. Oh, face oh, no. mask. And that's going to give Franklin another 15 yards. No, nope, he said five yards. Oh, not did he? Personal okay. Foul. So it's going to replay second down. That's going to bring up a second and six. So, you, man, talk about could have been disastrous for Franklin if that was a holding penalty. <laughs> so that does bring it up second down yeah. six with 3.34 to go in the ball game. Whoa, and there's another free five Now it might be second down and one. That is disciplined situational football right there. For the ribs. So Independence giving Franklin some yardage here. Quickly the line, Critchlow. The stretch. Going to be close. Milam. Going to be short, I believe, Coach. Needed to get to the Think 29, so too. and yep. he didn't even get to the 30. Nope. So third and a long one. Now this is a big. This is a big first down right here for yeah. Franklin. Time to step up for your Independence Independence's defense. Not only that. The play clock is getting a little low. Does Coach Webb need to call timeout? I believe, I believe he did. False start on Was 85 that? Matthews. <clears throat> yep. The end. Now, hmm. Boy, this has been an interesting series here. Two defensive penalties put us at put Franklin at third and one and now the offensive penalty is back Franklin back Franklin back to third and six A little cat and mouse going on right here pretty slow backside screen tripped up by 25 that's Adam Martin. Has sniffed that out quite well. Play was read nicely. That, as in maybe Adam Martin had seen that on film. Maybe. Done his homework for sure. Stayed at home on the screen pass. Went in and blew it clean up. So it looks like the Rebs are going to try and go for this on fourth and five. Well, here's the deal, Coach. We'll call timeout and talk timeout about it. Timeout for Franklin. If you kick this, Corey Fatoni from 52 yards for the win. Well, the 
interesting to see what Coach Webb wants to do. Defense has played pretty well the second half. Hey, if you'd like a copy of tonight's DVD, give us a holler for 615 $20 a copy. Check out our website, www.wc-tv.net, Facebook, Twitter. I tell you what, that YouTube channel every week's got something good on it. Always fun to watch. Coach's show, the sports connection, and of course the ever popular play of the week. Play of the week. We need maybe need to expand that to maybe the top three plays of the week. We might we might need to do that. We've got uh, opportunities for this week for sure. So again, Paul Brees, Michael Williams here on this chilly. I mean, chilly October twenty fourth night here at Franklin High School, my alma mater. Show no favoritism. I shan't. <laughs> But it's always fun to come back. Critchlow, fourth down, the rollout, he's gonna be, oh almost, my! Almost picked off. Slip through the fingers of Adam Swayze. Adam Swayze, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, used to be the quarterback. That's right, that was our, our second game of the year, right after the uh, Blackman game. So now Independence with a chance to go ahead with two minutes remaining in the ball game. Watch these bunch with, uh, he's hit Franklin on two pump fakes tonight. Swayze, check down. Nice tackle on the play. Keeps your clock running. We might be in, we could easily be in for some bonus football tonight. Gates and Falk on the tackle, gain of about four. Second and six. If, if this is the speed that uh, you need, Independence is pretty good at it. Oh. Daniel Wright, the intended receiver coach. Third down and six. Munch may have been hurried a little bit on that one as well. So now Independence up against it with a minute and a half to go in the ball game. And again, the Franklin student section is coming to life. Pass Johnson, first down to the 50. Clock's going to stop, but the chain set. Bunch sends three of his receivers down to his left. Check down to Childers. Little room, gonna yeah, you get out like maybe a first down. <laughs> I, think he, I think he got there, to right, he needed the 40, and they're gonna give it to him, they're gonna wave him ahead. So Independence has all three timeouts left. As the clock gets ready to take up under a minute here. Again, not even in field goal range yet. Shoulder is going to lean forward for about three. And this is going to be Coach Blade and the Eagles first down. Well, timeout called by the Eagles. We've ticked just under a minute to go in this game. 57 seconds to go, 57 seconds to play, 27 all. The Eagles have the ball second down seven on the Franklin 37 yard line. Again, our score knotted at 27. Probably one of the better games that we've had all season, Coach. Absolutely, I'll take it. Again, Paul Brees, Matt Hill, the whole crew, Kachumba, Boyce, Tyler. What did I say, Matt Hill? Yeah. Hey, a little low, Matt Hill. <laughs> Michael Williams, I'm sorry. I'll take the compliment. At, uh, yeah. <laughs> Creed and uh, Lance down in the truck. Tori, I don't know where she went to. Maybe she's doing replay. Second down and eight. Bunch rolls, gonna throw it, tipped. Ooh. Who was that tipped by? 
I think it's Kyle Evans. Sure was, came across, had an opportunity for the pick, but just got away from him. Third and seven, not enough time to do a whole lot. Bunch backside, here comes the pressure. No, oh, near Tip. pick. Almost intercepted by Gonzalez. It's good. Uh, and Daniel Wright very well had to, he had to play cornerback there the last second of that as he had to play defender. Coach, Bunch I rolling got a, out to the I, left. I got a question that two plays in a row that Swayze has gone away from his throwing shoulder, gone left, <laughs> had to turn. <coughs> it's always a sign of a good, good quarterback if you squared the shoulders up, but. Well, we've got 45 seconds remaining in the game here. All right, here we go. Coach Independence Blade. facing play, facing a fourth down and seven situation. Wow, 45 seconds left. There's that pump fake again. He's got it. Oh, turned around. Overthrown. Adam Swayze. And we got a flag. <laughs> I believe it's going to be on the Eagles. So Franklin will definitely decline that. And they have, now the Rebs have 38 seconds to work with. Swayze had created uh, some space right there, Coach, on that uh, pattern. But now the Indy defense is going to have to What can the Rebs do here with 38 seconds remaining in this game? Well, Critchlow. Going to throw back to Matthews. The low and ladder. It's got fumble. And the Eagles pick it up. Well designed. Poorly executed. Had the right idea. Just couldn't connect. And the recovery by the Eagles, wow. Gutsy play call. Boy, high drama with the last yeah. 45 seconds of this game, Ooh. huh? So timeout, Coach Webb and the Rebels, 31 seconds. Right, so check it right here, Coach. It was going to be set up nice. That was it was it's lovely. Just but he had plenty of green in front of him. Yeah. Again, don't hang your heads if you're a Rebel fan. 31 seconds at the 43. Independence has got to get down to at least the 10-yard line to get anything happen. Not only that, they got to tend against Grassi and Katera. Blocked three kicks last week. He would love to make uh, – one tonight if it came down to it, but so not not game over yet. Not game over yet. Exactly. Half a minute to go. Independence. How many have they? Just, did they just burn their last time out? Uh, Franklin will still have uh, one remaining. Independence has two. Well, I guess I've known that if I'd looked at the scoreboard. Check out our graphics. Or check out Lance. the graphics. Excuse me. Franklin bringing pressure off the end. Swayze going to throw, dump, complete. He gets out of bounds, too. 19. That's Huner. Seth Huner again having a big night for these Independence Eagles. 23 seconds remaining. Check it. Boy, we had the presence of mind to, to duck out of bounds, too, to get this clock stopped at 23 seconds to go in the game. Underneath route. Open. Nothing uh, going to be behind. Here we go. Reverse. And Lots he's of got green. plenty of room. 
Oh, it's going to be a score. Check it. And a flag, flag. is going to come down late. Dang, hold everything. Deion Thompson, 55 for the Eagles, is holding his hands out like, what did I do? The flag has been thrown at the 13. And if that is holding, it's going to be 10 yards from the spot. And that's exactly what it is. We've seen two big calls, Michael. The hook and ladder attempt by Franklin and now the reverse with uh, 23 seconds these left. These coaches digging deep down in the playbook. Both of these guys desperately wanting this game. Well, this is the fun stuff you can pull out that you've been working on <laughs> uh, since July. You're like, oh, we have that play. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how about that? Well, the play clock is going to start. So they give them the first down. Of course, it, I don't know how much it matters with 13 seconds to go in the game. So you've got, you, you definitely have two shots at the end zone here. With 13 seconds remaining, your score tied at 27. Well, I'm a rebel. Look at Tom Childers and look out for Nate Johnson. The middle, he has caught it. Huner going to drag down to the 10. Get a timeout. And there is a timeout. Six seconds left. Coach Blade had to run down to about the 15 to get it called. For him, from here, you're looking at about a 27-yard field goal. Here's the problem. <laughs> for, a, for a kicker like uh, number 53, is it? Uh, where's my man? Chris Cole, the offensive lineman turned kicker. Mm -hmm. Putting the ball on the left hash, <coughs> probably not a great spot for someone like him. <laughs> well, you still have one timeout, so what do you do? You take, a, you want to take one more shot at the end zone? Well, you don't take a shot. I think. Well, they're going to kick it either way. On the on the left hash, I'll. You know what? If I was, if I was Coach Blade, and I'm not, I'm standing <laughs> up here. I would run a uh, bunch. Right to the middle of the field, take three steps and fall down, call timeout, <laughs> and they kick it from the middle of the field. But here we go. Here's your gain. Ball on the 10. Spotted at the 17. The hold, the kick Not low. So good. And settled by the crowd. It is no good. Chris Cole on the attempt, low liner left, no good. Three seconds. And now you've got three seconds to go in the game. <laughs> High drama here in the last 45 seconds of this one. Looks like we might be headed for extra football, a little free football tonight. Yep, Critchlow's going to take a knee and, and settle we're gonna, for overtime. We're going to leave it up to a coin flip here in a second. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and ladies and gentlemen, our game of the week number two here as the Independence Eagles and the Franklin Rebels tied at 27. Overtime coming up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's never easy getting out of the Franklin parking lot, Coach. It's going to be 20 times difficult now that everybody stayed. Yep. <clears throat> Even the band is, well, they're, they may start loading up. I'm not sure to head to Indy, but a lot of people still in the house. Centennial has maintained second place, a 43-7 victor over Dixon County. Ravenwood over Brentwood, 37-7. And here we are tied at 27-all. Man, man. 
I would tell you the Fairview page score, but you've already watched the game. <laughs> <laughs> the Super Bowl of the small schools of Williamson County. Is that out at uh, Rudderville tonight? <coughs> no, I believe that's at Fairview High School as the game of the week has been produced by the Franklin Media uh, class up there. They do a fantastic job. And mark it in your calendars. Check the replay of Paige Fairview, Franklin Independence, Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. And on Wednesday, Coach, <clears throat> it's football all day. I think it may be like 10, 1, and 4 or something like nice. that. Nice. Well, according to both student sections at Franklin and Independence, both student sections this believe just in. they will win. Uh, this just in. Attention. Attention. <laughs> <laughs> they believe that they will win. Well, if the students had anything to do with it, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> I, well, you got to give Independence credit for coming on the road and, and filling it up over there. Very true. Very uh, true. You, you normally don't see a big crowd, like the old whiteout tonight. Everybody get on your Twitter and uh, wear your white shirts. Mm. Here's what I know. It's getting a little chilly up here. It is getting a little chilly up here. On Lance is wearing shorts, I'm sure. On the press box. All right, here we go, the all-important coin flip. We go down to our sideline reporter. No, I'm just kidding, we don't have one. <laughs> the ceremonial coin. <laughs> Heads I win, tells you lose. <laughs> and it's going to be Independence winning the toss. Do you want to take the ball, Coach? What do you want to do? I want the ball. Oh, they're going to give it to <laughs> – they're going to give it to – oh, they're going to go – I tell you what, you know what I would have done? Yeah. If I won the top, nope. Franklin's going to get the ball. They're going toward the student section. If I was Independence, I'd have gone that way where no students are. <laughs> but heading from north to south, we're heading to the south end zone. We're headed down to the Nerf game. <laughs> there have been a few injuries reported already <laughs> by some third graders. <laughs> In my day, we used to kick dust up down there, yeah, they, they, throw it around in a uh, Pepsi they, cup. They got smart. They started paving that Yeah, grass. they sure did. <laughs> so here we go. Here's your overtime rules. Four plays from the 10. After the second touchdown, Coach, you got to go for two. So what defense is going to hold? Now, here's what I know. Defensively, Jordan Pope has come around. Played well. Four. I run away from him if I'm Franklin. Yeah, five, four, I find four, out where he's way. not, and I go the other way. Oh, man. Oh, Critchlow's going to be stopped. Whistle blows. Where loss I find, of about a half a yard. I find out where he is, and I go the other way. Well, he ran right into him. Yep, he comes up <laughs> off the bottom of the Jordan pile. Jordan Pope is now. <laughs> nope, that's going to be number four. That is Chris Beavers. No Don't call me Ben Beavers. Number the three. Beavers are building the dam tonight for the <laughs> Independent Eagles, Independence Eagles. Second down. Again, you can't get a first down. So second down. Would love to see seven if you're Rebel. Grimes, the handoff. Ooh. And check your... Check your rosters. That's Keegan Hay, uh, 63. That's uh, Keegan, Keegan Hudson. Hudson. That's right. I think there was a former student, Keegan Haney, we taught. <laughs> nice play. Is that the Channel 4 helicopter that flies around? And yeah, coming in, coming in. Do they still do that? Yeah. <laughs> so third down. Just inside the 10, maybe about the eight and a half. Critchlow has yet to throw in a pass. Grimes, double reverse. reverse. He's going to pass it, looking to pass. Going to throw to Critchlow. In the corner, touchdown. Got it. Evans to Critchlow. Dial it up. Touchdown, 
touchdown. Riddles. He could not have had more than a half a foot to get both of those <laughs> feet down there on the corner of the end zone. So Critzel says I can run it, I can throw it, and I can catch it. Credit, credit these Franklin receivers. They've definitely held on to the football tonight. Oh, that is going to be close. Wow. That could have been a difference maker. Landon Gidry, seven for Independence. Squeaked it through. Almost with the block. And Fatoni puts it up the uprights. And here comes the defense of the Rebels. Here's the play, Coach. Well, they had everybody shifted over to the left there, and everything was going that way. Including the D lineman, and, 54. And they bit on it. <coughs> but credit those Independence D backs. They were back there, but number six. Kyle Evans playing there quarterback Bob there. Childress, one play, touchdown. Give it to him. Eagles, now, Coach Blade, that was too easy. Will he go for two? A lot of people are staring at him. They're saying, Coach, I can get two yards. For the win? Do they trust the kicker, Cole? Here comes Bunch, back on the field. Here's if your I, ball game. Donnie Webb, if I was Donnie Webb, I'd call a timeout. Get the right personnel in the game. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Oh, man. You know what? The touchdown run by Childers, it was just too easy, and I think – that cost Coach Blade for Independence to say, I'm going to go for two. Might as well. This is going to be, it's all come down to this. We've played. We smash mouth them. We've played two hours for this moment right here. I'm going to say almost three hours. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we have played almost three hours. So if you were looking for extra football after the Page Fairview uh, game of the week, you got it right here. You've come to the right spot. Look at Childers creating space. Boom. Very nicely done. All right. <laughs> so what are you telling your defense right here, Coach Brees? Holy moly. What do you tell them? we got to make a stop. I mean, you got to read, read your keys. You, you know, the front four, you got to, you know, you got to create contact. Got to win your battles, don't yeah, you? Win the battles. That's a great way to put it. Bunch is going to be in shotgun. Childers is back there. I think it's going to be a pass uh, run option for Bunch. Either way, here's the last play of the ball game. Reverse. He's going to be stopped. He's going to be stopped. The Rebels have prevailed. <laughs> 19, Seth Huner has a, had a game of his life, but the Rebels Try the reverse. read the keys, won the battle. And Number have, 19, and have Seth prevailed. Huner tries to get in there. I, I don't know if he had the ball jarred loose or if he, if he pitched it forward. <clears throat> what an enormous win for the Rebels. What a hard fought game. Well, a game of the week, classic possibly, as both coaches shake hands and the hard fought win. You hate to have a loser, but your final score on our WCTV part two game of the week, the Franklin Rebels move on to seven and two as they win 34-33 against the Eagles. And we will be next week, Centennial High School, in a battle for second place. The winner will have second, Michael Williams. Great night. Had Thanks a big time. Thanks for being here. Thanks, man. Enjoyed it. So, for all of us on the WCTV crew and the gang, we thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next week as the Rebels hang on 